when you're standing on the LA River, it's like fishing at any river. You've got duck swimming around you, you've got geese guarding their nests. You can easily mask out all the sound from all the traffic from the freeways and the overpasses. The more people you make aware of such a beautiful place, the better chance you have of preserving it and making it thrive in the future. A lot of people like to exercise, a lot of people like to do yoga. I actually love to wake up early in the morning. I'm an early bird as it is. I like to make my coffee, sit down, tie some flies. I'll pack them up, head to the river, and try to catch fish on them. My name is Lino Jubilato, and I'm a Los Angeles River fly fisherman. I'll do anything I can to protect this beautiful waterway. And I know that if I bring awareness to others, hopefully they'll feel the same and, and want to do the same. I have been fishing the LA River for, God, almost over 40 years, actually. Most people, they think of it as a sewer. It is actually a waterway. Up and down the river, there are natural sections that are just loaded with carp. I mean, the nicknames, the sewer salmon is one of them, gutter grouper, Tijuana trout. I call them golden nuggets, because that's what they are to me. And hopefully we'll get a bunch today. What's up, Annalisa? Hey, what's up? <laughs> How are you? Good, good. My name is Annalisa Del Rosario, and I live in Los Angeles. I was like your materialistic girl who loved to travel and design her bags. But my love for the outdoors and travel really helped me fall in love with fly fishing. And so, slowly but surely, I was getting rid of my Chanel bags for my fly rods and meeting cool people like Lino and a bunch of other women. I love it. When you tell most people LA River, they don't think it's a safe place, but I could walk for miles and it was green, there were fish, and you hear this water in the sound, right? It's so therapeutic. Just keep an eye on that indicator. Okay, there it is. I'm in marketing and I have two children. It's just nice to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city. I grew up in the Philippines and I moved here when I was 12 years old. And fishing has been something that my family did, but I never did it. But with fly fishing, <laughs> that's one thing that my mom doesn't like because I catch and release. There we go! <laughs> 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 nice job! <laughs> yes, thank you! I love fishing with Annalisa. She is a ball of energy that I love to be around when we're on the water. It makes the slow days great days, happy days. She belongs to several of the clubs locally. She also has run uh, different uh, women's groups. She just does a really good job um, bringing an awareness to fly fishing the LA River. Here it comes. Tired now, he's tired now. That's a nice fish. Woo! There we go. Hey. There we go, there it is, there it is. Woo! Yes! Yeah! Woo -hoo! Woo! Look at that dude. Uh -oh. How about this? We're a little tangled up Woo! here, but that's okay. That is a big nugget. Look at that. Woo! My name is Michael Affelt, and I lead the LA River Works team in the office of Mayor Eric Garcetti in the city of Los Angeles. I'm originally from the state of Michigan. Been in Los Angeles about 16 years and have been part of the LA River revitalization movement in office for about 11 years. I came out of the 90s environmentalism movement, a lot of pushes for recycling for the first time, a lot of rising public awareness. I knew I wanted to be an engineer, but I saw all the ingenuity that was born of engineering that had massive, massive negative consequences, side effects. I think the LA River seems to be a pretty good example of how our natural drive for progress and ingenuity, let's say engineering a waterway so that it doesn't flood the community, can have these negative consequences that aren't necessarily foreseen at the time. 
For centuries, the uh, Native Americans that were here relied on this LA River as, a, as, as their primary source of water um, and food. But what would happen is during the storms, without flood control, they would pretty much flood all the flats and all of the homes that they had surrounding it. So as time went on, I think it was in the 30s, the Army Corps of Engineers were asked to figure out a way to kind of control the, the flooding and then make it just wash straight down into the ocean. So they decided to encase the entire river in concrete. And so we have a very functional and effective engineered drainage system, but of course a severely degraded riparian habitat system, whereas LA used to be full of wetlands and streams and creeks. Now many of those are underground or paved over. You're getting runoff from all the sewers, all of the gutters on the streets. It all piles up in here into the LA River, which is why there's so much trash. When it rains, it comes right off the sidewalk. Lots of shopping carts, clothes. You could put together a good wardrobe in any time of the day if you wanted to in this place. I was fishing with a girl who was pregnant, and then we found like a baby carriage, and we we're like, hey, this is perfect for you. Let's clean it. <laughs> we have lots of um, physical improvements, screens at storm drains, um, bioswales and green streets in some parts of the city. But with the massive volume of water that drains off of our city streets during a rain event, a lot of trash ends up in the river, unfortunately. And so, the mission around the Los Angeles River is to help revive some of the life that really was here forever and wants to be here again. We're on the Taylor Yard Bicycle and Pedestrian Bridge, which connects Elysian Valley and Cypress Park. These communities haven't had a easy, meaningful connection across the river since its channelization. And it is here to connect people across the river as well as to the river and the natural resources that are here. This is a group of students. This is a group of people that care about the environment. And these moments, these days, are what really inspire me the most. I'm Dennis Mabasa. I'm the director of education at Friends of the LA River, also known as FOLAR. And today we're at Lewis McAdams Riverfront Park, right by the LA River. In order to create a, a future where humans connect with nature, we need to recognize that we are part of nature. The waste that we're creating eventually goes somewhere. It goes into the LA River, and that's why we have to do these cleanups. The only way that we're gonna solve big issues like climate change, um, social justice issues, is through community level solutions. And that's why we need to focus on not things that I can do, but things that we can do. So we're gonna start with a little activity. Everyone, we're gonna feel our own heartbeat. So try to listen to your heartbeat. Feel the rhythm of it. And recognize the blood that's flowing through your veins is the same water that flows through this river. Oh yeah. Oh! -ho -ho! There we go, bicycle wheel on some trash. Ever fly fish ready? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yay, good job. Listen to your heartbeat and we'll clap together. Water is the absolute essential connective element in life and society. You know, LA is a river city, and I think that our river and our waterways deserve to be thriving, healthy places. I have an eight-year-old daughter, her name is Nalia. Um, I've actually brought her out to the river a few times. She's, she's caught a few carp out here. Good, Nalia, just like that. Put your rod tip low to the water, like this. I know that if I've got more people down here to the river to fish and they could see firsthand how beautiful it is, it's just going to benefit the river well into the future because it is something that you'll want to protect. Once you fall in love with it, you'll want to protect it.